Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. Can you believe it's already been five years since the original Cooler Master NR200P launched? This is the refresh version, the version you guys have been asking for. This is called the Cooler Master NR200P V2. It's got a lot of new improvements, but is this just the Cooler Master NR200P Max without the cooler and power supply? Let's find out. First of all, panel removal. This is the same as the original NR200P. Basically what you wanna do is there's a little notch on the back of the case. You can kind of just pull that side panel away from the case. Next up, the rear panel, exactly the same thing. There's a little notch on the top edge of the case. Next up, removing the front panel. There's a little indentation when you run your finger along the bottom of this panel. All you need to do is grab that and give it a big yank and you can rip that front panel away. And lastly, now that you've got all the panels off, the top panel is easier to remove. You can put your thumbs here on these edges and you just push up and you can lift that top panel away from the case. Optionally, you can remove the bottom panel as well. And depending on the build that you do, I would recommend this, especially if you're installing fans in the bottom. But the way to remove the bottom panel is there's a single screw at the bottom of the case. Put your finger on the foot and lift the rest of the case away. The NR200P V2 has magnetic dust filters. There's one on the bottom of the case and there's also magnetic dust filters on both of the side panels as well. These are very easily removable. The front of the case, they've got these four rubber grommets and they've got little pegs and you can slide a drive in there. It also says SSD, so you know, it kind of helps you out. The last place is going back to that bottom panel and you'll notice it's got these four holes on it. This is for three and a half inch drives and it comes with mounting for that as well. However, you're losing out on using a fan in that location. For power supply support, it is the same as the NR200P, the first version of it rather. You remove these two screws here and then it allows you to either lift the power supply into the SFXL location or the SFX location. I've actually already moved this up to the SFXL location because that's where I'll be using it, but default it's in the SFX position. There's a single pre-installed 120 mil Cooler Master Sickle Flow fan in the case as well. This is a PWM fan and to be honest, this fan isn't horrible. I suspect that you won't be using this because for fan and radiator support, on the bottom, we can do two 120 mil fans here and I wouldn't recommend trying to install a radiator here because it probably won't fit because of the GPU anyway, but you know, don't do it down there. We all know how that goes. And up top, which makes this different to the original NR200, you can do liquid cooling up here. So you can do two 120 mil fans, two 140 mil fans, or you can do a 240 mil liquid cooler or a 280 mil liquid cooler. Exactly like we saw with the NR200P Max, except that was pre-installed. Another thing to note is if you're wanting to install a liquid cooler in the NR200P V2, these two cross beams on this side and the rear side can be removed. They're four screws each and it kind of makes it easier to pull those out, put the cooler on those and then drop it back in and fasten it all up. I'm not sure if that's a recommended way of doing this, but when I've completely pulled apart the NR200P Max, that's how I did it. For motherboard support, the NR200P V2 supports ITX motherboards only. This leads into the whole air cooler situation because uh, this is strange considering the original NR200P supported much taller coolers, but because this is geared more towards liquid coolers and also because the GPU can only be mounted vertically, you need to accommodate for the cooler behind the GPU. So that maximum CPU cooler height is now only 67 millimeters. This is a case that I would recommend you only installing a liquid cooler. You can air cool, but there's no real reason to. For the internal case wiring, we've got a USB type C cable. That's new. We've got a combined block for all your lights and all your switches to turn on your system and to let you know it's on. There's a USB type A front panel connector as well as front panel audio. Front panel IO on the V2 has been improved over the original. We've now got USB type C at the front. 
two USB type A ports, a combined headphone and microphone jack, and a power button, which doubles as a power light. The NR200P V2 also comes with a tempered glass side panel. Now, if I'm being honest, it looks good. And for certain uses, it would be okay. But if you're using a big thick GPU, I would probably not recommend using this. I think Cooler Master should have left this out considering most GPUs are pretty thick now. And we could have saved a little bit of money here without including the tempered glass panel, but I can see the reasoning behind it. They've probably already got the tooling for the original one and they probably had millions of TG side panels for the NR200P original floating around and they're like, hey, we'll just include this because you know, why not? As well as that, if you've got a water cooled GPU and you're doing some water cooling in here, then I don't think it would matter too much whether or not the side panel was glass and you'd probably want to look at it anyway. Now this is the bit you've been waiting for. This is GPU support. Okay, let me explain how this works because it works in two different ways. First of all, if you're installing a GPU that sits within the bounds of the case, 334 millimeters, but that's not the only way to install a GPU in this case. There's a couple ways. First of all, this rear bracket here is removable. It's exactly the same as the NR200P Max. Your GPU mounts to this bracket here and then you slot your GPU in from the back side of the case, or you can do, or you can feed it in through the front. It's completely up to you. I would recommend installing it to this bracket. If you're asking if the ROG Strix RTX 4090 fits in here, the answer is, yes, it does. Now, first of all, you might be saying, hey, that doesn't actually fit. That's sticking out the front. Well, it does fit. The front panel of the case has more room inside of it to accommodate these big ass GPUs. So this Strix 4090 fits with no problems. Here's the best bit about this, right? This is what I found most interesting. The measurement of this card's length is 357.6 millimeters. The maximum length of this case is 357 millimeters. This GPU is 0.6 millimeters longer than the case, yet it still fits with no problem. The NR200P V2 also comes with this little riser cable. This is not optional. This is required for building in this case. And the way this works is you plug one in into the motherboard and then you kind of put your hand under the GPU and plug it in. You can also do this by having the bottom panel off the case too. That can make it a bit easier. And I found that easiest with the max version of the case. There's also this little included adjustable GPU knob. That's what I'm calling it. That's the name of this thing now. It's a GPU knob. If we compare the NR200P V2 to the NR200P Max, you can now see that the Max version does not have the same hole cut out for the GPU, whereas this one does. Now for the Max, if you wanted to, I'm sure you could use a Dremel and just cut it out. Kind of like how I mangled up this case in the video. Uh, you can watch that, it's in the description. But yeah, look how nice and easy that is now, right? They've made the tooling for this a lot nicer. Look, I'm not sure how helpful this is to you guys, but again, here is the V2, here is the Max, and from what I can see and from my experience building with the Max, there's only very minor differences. So first of all, the internal layout is the same. So they've brought whatever they made for the Max over, for the top radiator over to the V2, right? The power supply mounting is the same. The riser cable and everything between them is the same. As shown, the front hole out here is different and much larger to aid with much bigger GPU installation, which is a welcome change. And a lot of people were modding their cases to do that anyway. The way the bottom panel attaches is the same. The major difference between the two is actually the front IO. This has got USB type C, whereas the Max doesn't, but it looks like they thought about it when you look at the PCB on the front there, whereas this just has it. And basically everything else is the same other than the other obvious thing where this version doesn't have a cooler and a power supply, whereas the Max version does. But yeah, it is kind of nice to see them finally addressing all of the questions people had as to why they didn't release a Max version and a V2 at the same time. 
I guess they wanted to see with the feedback they got from the Max version with what they could do a little bit better and put all of that into the V2. So, so far it is looking much better than the V1. Now I would love to have had the V1 here for comparison, but I don't have one anymore. I gave all of them away to friends and family. If you already own one of the NR200Ps in a different color, you might be asking, will my panels from my V1 fit on the V2 if I just wanted to upgrade the internals? The answer is, this is the Max panels and the Max panels are the same as the original NR200. Yes. The side panels also, yes. So it's all interchangeable. In fact, I could make this Nardo gray <laughs> NR200P V2 if I really wanted as well. The only difference is gonna be this new top panel with the USB Type-C cutout. Or you could cut it out yourself, it's up to you. <laughs> the final difference between these two cases is maybe one that you won't notice, but you can see that the whole patterns are completely different which means that the V2 is technically a more open case. Look at the density of the holes here and the size of the holes, they're much larger. And it also goes higher up and further down. And realistically, this whole side panel could be all the way mesh, but you know, I get it. It's just for structural rigidity as well. I gotta say all the changes with the NR200P V2 are welcome changes and it's looking quite interesting with all of these new changes as well, but let's do our usual thing. Let's do a build and test the thermals and see what the deal is with the V2.
look at the thermals. What you're seeing on your screen right now is the thermals are quite good. Remember, this is a 7700X. Despite it only being an eight core, it does get quite hot. What we're seeing with the GPU temperatures here is something quite interesting. And we see this quite often when we have vertically mounted GPUs. Now, what's happening here is when all the panels are off, there's no pressure in the case. So the fans underneath the GPU aren't generating pressure. When we close it up and with the filter off, there's even more pressure for some reason. And we get the best GPU thermals when there's no filter and the side panel is on. So yeah, pretty interesting results here for thermals. Also, I just wanted to add with the thermals, I decided not to test with the tempered glass for a very good reason. You've got to be out of your mind to use a GPU like this and use a glass panel with the GPU being that close to the glass panel. Like I said earlier in the video, Cooler Master should have just left the TG panel out. I, I don't know why it's included still, especially when it's a vertically mounted GPU. Just give us the mesh side panel. That's what people want. Small form factor people generally do not care about looking inside of their computers at all. They want airflow, and the best way to get airflow is to not use a solid panel. <laughs> Did you see that? I just put my hand straight in the GPU fan. Oh, I thought there was a panel on there and I forgot that it was open. If you're interested in any of the hardware used in this build, there's a PC part picker list down below, and if there's not, I'll get to it. I'll eventually just add it whenever it's ready. Okay, what do I think about the NR200P V2? Well. When we compare this to the NR200P Max, there are a lot of similarities. Obviously, the main one being, again, we've got USB-C and no included cooler and no included power supply. But I think Cooler Master has really looked at compatibility here and added things that a lot of people have asked for, but not everything is perfect. Let me explain. First of all, with this system, I tried to use parts that I know are kind of out of spec because some people might be upgrading a system or already have parts, especially with this Corsair power supply. It's SFX L and it should technically work in this case. However, one thing I did notice was it was very close to the fans on the liquid cooler. Look at this clip right here. You can see like I can spin it with my finger. It doesn't touch, but it can be a bit of an issue when your fans get to a certain RPM because what happens is with the centrifugal force and the way that the air is pushed through the radiator, the hub of the fan begins to push away from the frame and half a millimeter is enough for it to make a rubbing sound. I did find a little fix and that was loosening the side case screw a little bit and the top case screw on that corner. And that gave it less than half a millimeter of adjustability so that fixed it for me. One big surprise with this case was the fact that this massive ROG card fits in there, even though it's slightly out of spec for this case by 0.7 millimeters. But as you can see, it's fine. It fit just in the case really, really well. So yeah, I would say that Cooler Master maybe add a one millimeter to your specs because yeah, this is bigger. The other thing I thought was worth mentioning was a lot of recommendations, even for the NR200P Max, were that you can't use full width 25 mil fans underneath the GPU. Well, you can't use two of them, but here we are, like it works no problem. Also keep in mind that I tried really hard to make the cable management nice here so there wouldn't be any rubbing on fans or anything like that. So if you're building in the NR200P V2, really take that into account. Make sure your cable management is solid. Otherwise you will have things fouling on other things. Here's the elephant in the room with this video. When we used this motherboard last time for another build, we used a Cooler Master SFX power supply and this board just did not work. Ooh. I have a feeling, hear me out, this motherboard hates this power supply. Every time I've used this power supply and this motherboard together, it hasn't worked, but I thought it might be different this time. Well, with this Corsair power supply, it's working, but there are some issues with this motherboard. First of all, the Ethernet 
just work or it doesn't work when you reboot the system, it has a mind of its own. And the RGB controller, which communicates to the motherboard through USB on the board itself, completely fried. Doesn't detect RGB. I installed Windows a bunch of times, did a whole bunch of tweaks, but it looks like the USB controller for the RGB on this board is dead. And maybe the Cooler Master power supply is a little bit more sensitive to those things, which is why it didn't work when we tried this board last time. But I thought I'd clear that up because I said that if I had an update on this board that I'll let you guys know. I actually chucked an RGB controller in the backside of this case just to light up the fans for the video, just for a bit of that aesthetic appeal. But yeah, this motherboard is fucked. <laughs> Simple as that. Going back to the NR200P V2, it's kind of the perfect revision for an NR200P. The first one was really good for air cooling, a bit hit and miss for liquid cooling because you could only put a radiator at the bottom and we know how that went. We've seen builds by people where the radiator is mounted at the bottom with the pump at the top of the loop in a closed loop system. This is a very bad idea. And it kind of started a trend of people being misinformed about liquid coolers as well because they didn't watch the video properly. Right, and that's the biggest thing. We still get comments about it to this day, and people are just, I gotta say it, they're dumb sometimes. What's nine plus 10? 21. You stupid. If I had to make one complaint about the NR200P V2, and it's the same complaint I made about the NR200P, the paint. It is an absolute fingerprint magnet. How can they not make paint that is not susceptible to getting fingerprints like that. And it's not the fact that it just gets dirty from your fingerprints. It's the fact that it's impossible to clean. My hands aren't oily. I wash my hands so thoroughly before I build so I don't get fingerprints on things. And here we are covered in fingerprints again. But other than that, like I said, nothing to dislike about this case. It is really, really nice and it's good to see that they got the NR200P Max, all the nice things from that, iterated on that a little bit and made this a really nice V2. So good work, Cooler Master, you guys did good. But is it worth your hard earned money? If you're interested in the Cooler Master NR200P V2, they're currently going for around 129 US dollars or around about 159 Aussie dollars at the time of filming this video. As for availability, I'm not sure they're in stock everywhere yet. I think I was pretty lucky to get this one because I saw that they had announced the NR200P V2 and I'd seen like pictures of it out in the wild, but I was like, hey, Cooler Master, like get me one of these because I want to take a look at it because, you know, we we're such huge fans of the NR200P and we've got to have the V2. We've got to see what's up with it. As for what's going to happen with this NR200P V2 case, I think I'm gonna build a PC for my dad and I'm gonna build it for him in this because he has this huge PC he bought a couple years ago and I don't know why he just bought some random PC but it's huge in this massive thermal tech case and I was at his house a little while ago and I'm like, dude, your computer is huge. Like, let me pop it open and have a look. It had an MATX board, a 3070 and this just huge full tower thing. I'm like, we gotta sort that out. So I'm gonna build him something nice and ITX so he can play flight sim in VR till his heart is content. All right, that's, that's it. Okay, if you like the music you heard here, I make all the music. It's available by clicking that join button right down there down below. If you wanna get early access to videos kinda of like this one, I don't know if this one's going up on Floatplane early, but we're on Floatplane. I'll put a link to that down below in the description. Let us know what you think about the NR200P V2. Will it be something you'll be upgrading to? Will it be something you'll be building a new PC in? Or will it be something that you will be skipping? Let us know in the comments down below. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. Doing another small form factor thing. You peak, we seek and I'm gonna try and add some footage of Binny now because yeah. Her name's Bindi, B-I-N-D-I. -I. I just call her Binny because it's easier to say Binny than Bindi. Are you tired? Oh, you're tired. You're sleepy. Oh, you're purring. Oh, that's a loud purr. You're so cute. Oh, that's cute. You're happy. Oh, you're very happy. 
You're very tired. Mm. Bye, Beanie.